Hey everybody, um, so today I just want to do a quick video on how we can measure temperature in LabVIEW using the DACMX API. Um, so I have some previous videos, if you're not really familiar with DACMX, definitely check those out. I've got like a crash course, I've also got some stuff talking about like triggering, um, and I also have a video on voltage, which this will be very similar to voltage. Um, so yeah, like I said, the basic structure for this is going to be the same um, pretty much regardless of what we're measuring. We're going to add however many channels we need to our task, configure timing. Um, you actually can skip the configure timing sometimes when you're just doing like software timing and stuff. Um, we're going to want to read and we're going to also need to be able to stop and clear. So yeah, a lot of times when I'm doing DACMX, I'll just start like this. I know this is basically the functions I need for my task, and I'll just lay them all out, and then I can figure out what all needs to be connected to what and configured. Um, so yeah, let's uh, just wire this up really quick. Sweet. Awesome, we got our error wires. Sweet. And let's just add a simple error handler at the end. Um, sweet. And we're gonna wrap this in a while loop because we're going to do continuous samples. Um, sweet, so let's go look at what specifically you need to do to be able to read temperature. So this structure is exactly how we set up in the previous video to measure voltage. Um, now we want to be able to measure temperature. So the DACMX API is really cool in that there's pretty much, there's almost no differences in what we need to do in our code. Um, so I can go here to my uh, create channel um, right now we have selected analog input voltage, but I can go down to temperature. So you can see that um, DACMX supports a couple different types of ways to read temperature. Um, so through thermocouples, through RTDs, and through thermistors. Um, with either they, yeah, and it can either be excited through current or through voltage. Um, so it's going to depend somewhat on the type of card you're using, whether that be like a US, well, most of the USB decks don't support temperature, but let's say um, like your C-series modules. So for example, the 9210 accepts thermocouple inputs and there are specific um, devices for RTD as well. So um, depending on the, the type of device you're using, you'll want to select the appropriate um, one and thermocouple includes both mini connectors and just you know uh, wires coming into it as well so um, so yeah I'm gonna select thermocouple because that's what I have uh, simulated um, but yeah the, the the process is exactly the same regardless of the type of temperature sensor that you are using so I'm gonna select analog input temperature um, I can hide that menu now that I have all my DACMX functions down. So we still have our physical channels, um, so we can specify the physical channel that we want to read temperature on. Um, so I'm going to go to the CDAC 6 mod 2, which is our NI9210 module. Um, now the units, so when we were doing voltage we kind of ignored that um, because it was basically volts. Um, for this one you will want to pick the units you want. So out of the box you get degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit, Kelvin, and degrees Rankine. So um, select the one you want. I'm in the US so I'm, you know, degrees F just makes sense to me. Um, there also is this option on the bottom for the uh, thermocouple type, if we're using a thermocouple. Um, obviously, if you're using an RTD, you'll be specifying the type of RTD. Um, and there's other options as well for thermistors. So I, these are the supported types of thermocouples. Let's say I have a type K thermocouple. Um, there's this cold junction, um, sorry, let me pull up context help. So at the bottom, you can see that CJC value. So that's your cold junction value if you're using a constant. So CJC, cold junction, constant value. Um, so we have this CJC source. This is an important one. Um, 
So here we're basically specifying where we're getting our cold junction compensation from um, with our thermocouple devices. Um, because we're not in an ice bath, um, there is some sort of junction temperature that we want to be able to compensate for. So there's three different options. Um, a lot of the devices out there, so like this NI9210 for example, actually has a built-in cold junction temperature sensor. So if you select this, it's going to use that temperature sensor to be able to measure the cold junction temperature and compensate accordingly. So um, this is a lot of the times the best way to do that um, if your device supports it. If your device does not support it, you can select constant value and you can right here in that CJC value field, you will just basically specify what that uh, value is. So if it's you know 25 degrees Celsius, whatever it might be, um, that's where you would specify that. Um, and then the last one is channel. So if you specify channel, there is this CJC channel option where you can specify which channel is actually measuring your cold junction temperature. So if you had, let's say like a thermistor that you were using to measure your cold junction temperature, you can actually specify the device and the channel that is being used um, for that and it will be used in the calculations. So I'm just going to use built in because the device has it and in most cases that's the easiest. Um, and then this also has your max and min values. Um, so we get um, defaults 0 to 100. Um, we can change this to whatever we want. So let's say maybe I needed to read you know, up to 500 degrees. Um, and the lowest I was going to get was maybe 60 degrees. I can specify that there. Um, and that's pretty much it on the inputs. Obviously, we haven't connected the channel or the CJC value. Those can be left disconnected unless you're using either the constant value or channel. Um, so if you're using built-in, leave them disconnected. And we can assign a name if we want, but we don't need to. So there is our configuration. Um, now we get on to timing. So this is exactly the same as with voltage. Um, we specify a rate and we're going to specify continuous samples for this demo. Now, one thing to be aware of is temperature is something that changes very slowly. So um, because temperature is a very physical thing, um, you know, you have to actually transmit heat either through the air through like convection or through materials, through conduction or radiation. Um, and then that has to permeate through the objects. Um, it, it's typically not something that changes quickly. Like a voltage could be changing at very high frequencies, um, whereas temperature does not really change that quickly. So um, a lot of the thermocouples you'll find, I mean, like if you're measuring a thermocouple, right, you have two dissimilar metals that are connected and that's creating a voltage. Well, those metals have to physically change temperature. Now it is very thin metal, but it still has to physically change its temperature before the output voltage changes. So as such, most of these devices are not very fast. And if you, you'll want to, t to take a look at your um, temperature devices uh, specs. Um, so if you're looking at like a 9210 or like a 9212 or another temperature device, um, they will give you the max sample rates and they are actually pretty low. So um, typically you're around maybe like 10 samples per second and that's about what they support. Um, but realistically there's not a lot of benefit to sampling faster than that because typically things can't really change much faster than that. So, um, so yeah, well, this default of a thousand is almost always going to error out on a temperature device. Um, now, if you do have like a voltage task and you're combining an analog input temperature task with that voltage task, now the, the voltage card may be able to go significantly faster than the temperature card. You can actually specify a high sample rate um, because you have that voltage card in place and it's basically just gonna fill in the blanks of the data with um, the non-updated data. So let's say I wanted to read it like five kilohertz um, and let's say my temperature device could only update at 10, 10 hertz. Um, 
Well, it'll actually just fill in the gaps for me with the data when I do my reads with the previous data. So it, it actually handles it for you. But if you're only doing temperature, it will throw an error if you are using a rate faster than what the device supports. Um, so I'm gonna go and just set this to two Hertz. Continue with samples and we're gonna leave everything else disconnected. Um, then we're starting our task and I'm going to do analog, single channel, single sample, DBL. So we're just gonna read a single data point off of our, um, off of our temperature device and we're just gonna write that there. Um, so yeah, basically the same structure, right? All that really changed is this configuration here. Um, and then obviously we had to kind of reduce our sample rate a little bit, but really all that changes is here. And that's pretty much the case for anything that you are doing analog input. So if I go to read current, resistance, strain, I'm gonna get different inputs and options on this guy, but basically all of the rest of this code can be for the most part pretty much the same. So let's go run this example um, and see what we get. So yeah, we got uh, data. Obviously this is a simulated device, so this these numbers are kind of meaningless. Um, but yeah, we can see data coming through. Single point, two times per second, just like we would expect. There you go. Um, and yeah, the exact same process, again, if I want to add extra channels, I can either specify them here if on the same device, or I can add multiple create virtual channels along this wire to add all of my tasks in. But yeah, that's going to be how you can measure temperature with LabVIEW in using the DACMX API. Thanks for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.